Hey folks, this is Riker with a video on an upcoming action RPG that is kind of like Diablo in space. The game is called Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr. And if you're familiar with the 40k universe, you know it carries that same dark, gothic, gritty, bloody, gory, pseudo-religious, demon-fighting atmosphere of Diablo. Except it predates Diablo by about a decade. For months, I've had people coming by my streams or leaving comments on YouTube asking when I will cover this game. Since it's been in early access since August 2017 and is finally officially launching now on June 5th on PC and console. Well, developer Neo Core Games reached out to me with a sponsorship opportunity to cover this game, and I thought it would be a great fit for this channel. So we're going to thank Neocore Games, and we're going to dive into talking about Inquisitor Martyr. As we're going through this, if you want a link for more information for the Steam page, you can find that in the video description. So first off, let's start by talking about how this game is similar to other action RPGs like Diablo or Path of Exile. You start by creating a character. You pick from one of three classes and within those, one of three specializations. The game has a familiar top-down camera. You go through maps, killing tons of demons and other enemies. You use a variety of different skills with different effects like area of effects, damage over time, all all that kind of stuff. You collect a bunch of loot of different quality, different affixes on them that modify or give you boosts in different ways. You level up, you gain skill points, you allocate them into a skill tree, you gain attribute points, you craft items, you go through a story mode campaign, but then there's also a sandbox mode. You can play solo or you can play co-op with up to four players. There's also PvP. So this has all the trappings of an action RPG. So in that regard, there's a lot of familiar things to action RPG players, but there are also some distinctions. First off, it's pretty rare to get a sci-fi action RPG. And even among sci-fi settings, the 40k universe is absolutely unique. This setting was first created by Games Workshop back in 1987 as a tabletop game, and since then there have been countless tabletop and video games made in this setting. It's a dark space fantasy set in the 41st millennium, thus 40k, in a galaxy at constant war. Humanity has formed this interstellar empire that fanatically worships its holy god emperor. And in this game, you take on the role of an inquisitor, who is a secret agent of sorts tasked with killing heretics and rooting out the taint of chaos. You see, there's this dimension called the warp, and it's through the warp that humanity has achieved faster than light travel, but it's also a realm full of demons and chaos gods. And some humans have turned to the chaos gods and become corrupt. I've always found the 40k universe really compelling, and I'm a huge fan of its gothic visuals and iconography. If a sci-fi Diablo game were ever made, it would look damn similar to 40k. So the next big difference between Inquisitor Martyr and most other action RPGs is that it's a lot more tactical. There's a cover system. If you choose to play a sniper type character, you may find yourself using cover a lot more than if you're a melee character. But regardless, you'll note that ranged enemies frequently take cover. That cover, however, is destructible as are most things in the environment. So when you've got a giant boss chasing you around the map and you're trying to take cover behind things, it makes for some really dynamic fights when that cover gets obliterated. So overall, the more tactical nature of Inquisitor Martyr does make it feel a little slower than most ARPGs, but it also makes the combat feel less brainless and more challenging. I haven't reached the end game yet, so I'm not sure how the end game combat differs from the earlier game combat, I don't know how much faster the combat gets at that point, but I do look forward to finding out. Now, another difference I noted is that the AI seems to be smarter in this game than in most action RPGs, where they're relatively brainless or just follow a very simple set of actions. For instance, in this game, if you lay down a, an AOE, a patch of flame, that will last several seconds, the AI will actually try to path around it and avoid it. Now, a huge difference between Inquisitor Martyr and most action RPGs is the skill system. Your skills depend entirely on what gear you have equipped. Your weapon will give you four different skills. Primary attack, a secondary, and then two other skills on different short relatively short cooldowns. Then your armor will give you something of an ultimate ability that's on a much longer cooldown. Then you can have one potion type item, similar to a Diablo 3 style potion, except 
the differences between the potions are far more meaningful, and you can hold a certain number of potion charges before needing to find med kits on the field to replenish. Then you also have a belt item slot that gives you yet another power. This could be a grenade type item or a personal shield. And while in description this sounds a lot more like picking a loadout in a Call of Duty or a Battlefield game, in practice, in play on the field, it does feel like an action RPG. You can't change gear during missions, and thus you can't change skills during missions. This is only something you can do back when you're in your town hub, which in this case is your spaceship. You do, however, have a weapon swap option. So something that I've been doing is I'd keep an area damage weapon and thus skill set in one of my two hot swaps. This is for dealing with crowds of enemies, and then when I need to deal with, say, a boss or a single tough enemy, I'll hot swap to my number two, which is going to be a weapon that's really good at dealing single target DPS. I don't know if this is the optimal way to play, but this is just what I've been doing. So overall, there's no shortage of skills at your disposal. Four skills on one weapon, four skills on your other weapon, which you can swap through during combat. That said, when you swap, you do reset the cooldowns, so you can't just swap willy-nilly. It is a strategic choice. Then you have your ultimate, you have your belt slot item, and your potion, so there's a lot of different skills to be utilizing. That said, having your skills tied to your equipment is definitely a different experience. Now, one concern that I would have in this kind of system is, well, that just means all of your skills are available as of level 1. Inquisitor Martyr solves that by having you unlock the ability to carry different weapons as you level up. In other words, at level 1, you only have X number of weapons available to you, but by level 20, you've unlocked a whole bunch of other weapons that you can equip, and thus skills. Now, if you'll notice, I also touched upon another difference in there, that your town hub in this game is your spaceship. That's where you have your item vendor, that's where you have your crafting station, everything you need. From there, you have access to the star map, which allows you to visit different areas of space and the planets within them, sort of like navigating different acts in a typical action RPG and the waypoints within them. Then every mission or quest you embark on is sort of like going through a rift in Diablo or a map in Path of Exile. It creates a randomly generated instance, you go through it, you complete the mission, then you return to your hub. And the missions themselves have goals similar to Diablo bounties, be it kill all the enemies on that level, or it could be destroy certain specific enemies or certain specific stationary targets, or it could be find one or more objects on this level, etc. So I think that covers the major similarities and differences between Inquisitor Martyr and most action RPGs. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the mechanics of Inquisitor Martyr. Let's start by talking about the three classes. You got your Crusader, your Assassin, and your Psyker. You can roughly compare these to Diablo 1's archetypal Warrior, Rogue, and Sorcerer. The Crusader is the tankiest class and can specialize in either Assault, which is a melee type build, Tactical, which is a ranged build, or Heavy Gunner, which is a more area damage focused build. The Assassin is basically the high mobility light armor version of Crusaders, the glass cannons that rely on avoiding damage rather than tanking it. Assassins can specialize in either Infiltrator, which is a melee type build, Sniper, which is a ranged single target type build, or Eradicator, which is a more balanced ranged build between area damage, and single target. Then the Psyker is the spellcaster of Inquisitor Martyr, and he can specialize in either the Imperianist, which is an area damage focused build, the Aether Walker, which is a close combat build, or the Scryer, which is a ranged single target type build. Now overall, there's a lot more nuance to these descriptions, and depending on how you allocate your passive skill points, you can change up these builds, but these are rough, approximate descriptions. So about those skill points, your class and specialization determine which skill trees are available to you, at least which are unlocked at the start. You can unlock more passive skill trees by basically gaining achievements in the game, like deal X amount of damage to enemies behind cover. Then as you level up, you can allocate points into these different skill trees. Then you also have your attributes. In Diablo, this would be strength, dexterity, vitality. In Inquisitor Martyr, you have three attributes, but they are different depending on your class. So every class gets its own unique three attributes. And then as you're putting points into the attributes, each attribute has five additional bonuses that you can unlock by putting X number of points into that attribute. For instance, the Crusader has the following attributes, Warfare, Toughness, and Virtue. With every point you put into it, Warfare makes you deal more damage. Toughness gives you more hit points, and Virtue basically gives you more ultimate charge. But then as you put points into Warfare, for instance, 
In addition to the extra damage you're getting from every point, you eventually unlock the Demolition Bonus, which gives you 25% damage bonus versus cover. Then you eventually unlock the Deflection Bonus, which is a 5% bonus to deflect attacks. Then you eventually get the Mobility Bonus, which is a 5% bonus to move speed, and so on. Now let's briefly talk about the game's crafting system. It's pretty straightforward. You need a variety of materials to craft items. You can find materials, but you can also break down existing items to get materials. Then you can either find or buy recipes or blueprints to craft specific items. That's the basics, very simple, but beyond that there is added complexity in there being what amounts to a passive crafting skill tree, and this allows you to buff your crafting in different ways. Now the skill tree is not tied to your regular skill tree, it's something else that you spend a different form of currency on upgrading, but that's a little bit beyond today's discussion. All right, let's talk a little bit about missions and the campaign. As you're playing through the campaign and unlocking more regions to visit, you'll see what amount to side quests pop up. Sometimes these are standalone missions, but sometimes they're part of something called a grand investigation, which unlocks a series of connected missions that follow a storyline. Then even more rare than the grand investigations are priority assignments. These consist of a chain of procedurally generated missions that must be completed within a given time frame. As you're going through these, you often have choices to make that can influence either a mission itself or the ongoing narrative. Then the assignment as a whole has a success bar and a collateral damage bar. Your decisions can affect these bars and thus your rewards at the end of everything. Now overall, both your actions and the actions of the community will influence the ongoing storyline of any given region. The devs sprinkle in some conflict, but it's the players that effectively decide through their actions which side wins the conflict and thus how the story evolves. This isn't for the campaign mode, but rather for the sandbox mode. Then there will sometimes be seasons, which will not only introduce new content, like new races, new factions, new missions, and so on, but they'll also provide the community with an opportunity to leave a lasting mark on the game world. Now the game also has a morality system on a per character basis, Radical versus Puritan. Missions will sometimes prompt you to make a choice that may push you towards one or the other alignment or morality. Now my understanding from the lore is that a Puritan will never, under any circumstance, stray towards chaos. Whereas Radicals will do literally anything to better serve the Emperor, which ironically tends to get them labeled as heretics. I don't have enough experience with the morality system to discuss it further, but hopefully in a future video I can dig deeper into it. Something else that I'd like to show you guys in a future video is the Imperial Knight. If you're a Warhammer fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For the rest of you, a knight is basically a mech warrior style combat walker battle suit, and there'll be times in this game where you get to pilot one. But we'll leave that for another video. And that's gonna wrap up this video. I'll have two more videos coming up for Inquisitor Martyr, so stay tuned for more gameplay. I've been having fun with this game so far, and if you want more details, the link to the Steam page will be in the video description. Also, Games Workshop is currently having a big Steam sale on Warhammer games. The promotion will run until June 4th, 10 a.m. Pacific. During this time, Inquisitor Martyr will be 10% off, and the devs are also launching a global event with a dedicated leaderboard. People can gather skulls, and those who participate will get an exclusive skull mask for each class. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.